Welcome back to Alma, Missouri for episode 12 with me, the Carroty Kid, Mr. Silly P. Well, we're back here again on Alma, Missouri. Some ups and downs, some some goods, some awesomes, and some, yeah, not so good. Uh, from the last episode, as you've just seen, uh, all the bailing contracts I was doing are done. I haven't got the harvester back out to finish off the corn in this field. This field will need to be ploughed. We talked about in the last episode. As far as bales go, we put in the bale shelter. I've put in some other shelters as well. But we had silage, two silage bale contracts, two hay contracts. So the bales that were all stacked up down the side of this um, silage clamp all the way through the winter are these hay bales here. The 6,500s and 5,500s from previous bales from last year. And our straw bales I've put over here. All of these, all of these were from my hay baling contracts. These were left over. 10,000 litre bales and we have got loads of them. Which is awesome. All of those were left over from the silage. That was left over from the previous year. I missed that one. That was round the side against the wall. When the snow got deep just couldn't see it uh, and all of these again 10,000 litre are all awesome so bale situation pretty good I've loaded up our potato soup we've got four five I think it's five we've got five pallets of potato soup that's ready to go I've set all the pumpkin now are being sold directly so I don't have to deliver loads of pumpkin now so that's being done automatically here's where we've got a big problem our cooling building. Um, Stephen messaged me and said, um, are you having problems with the cooling building? So I said, no. And he said, because it had an update recently, which it did. The manufacturer updated the cooling controls and it became auto load, auto unload, like a pallet and bale, you know, storage facility. And when it first changed, I thought, oh, look, because I went to bring a pallet in, it disappeared out of my hands. I thought, oh, that's weird. Okay, that's gone. Um, taking out is done just here. And I tested one, and it came out, and it was no problem at all. So he said, I can't get anything out of my, my container. But here's where we've got a problem, because we've got 23 ice cream pallets. Our butter that needs to go over to our bakery, we've got six. I'm going to leave this door open. I've opened this door here. We come to here and we do that let's try and take out one one of our strawberry ice cream there's not enough space to place all objects I only want to place one I've tried one I've tried two I've tried multiples I've tried all 23 it won't put them out I, I can't there's nothing there's no obstructions unless that's no that won't lift um, so all those pallets that are in there, I now can't take out. And again, this, is, this isn't because I've got too many pallets out on the map. Because I haven't. <laughs> I've got one ice cream there, which I've left. I haven't put it in there yet. I've got one pallet of butter on my trailer. I think I've got five pallets there. I've got a couple of pallets there. There might be a couple of our corn flour, because our corn flour's been running. So... I don't know what to do. I... I there's a lot of money tied up in there and the butter we needed for doing our bakery. Bit annoyed. Uh, our carrots are ready to harvest and we are about to become the carroty kid. Roots on, roots off. Our farming sensei, Mr. Miyagi. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm a little bit disappointed. Anyway, we're going to go over to the... I keep saying anyway, sorry. We're going to go over to the vehicle shop we're going to i'll put the butter on there because i don't want to sell that we're going to get rid of the pumpkin the potato soup four pallets two thousand liters each that's selling for just about two thousand for a thousand liters as well so we should do all right out of that uh that's going to be the grain not the grain mill the grain cell anyway, whichever one it is open this and start this up so i'll drop off the telehandler why am i bringing the telehandler with me because, as I said, up at our grain mill, we've got our corn flour has been, is being produced. And when we get up to the store, we're going to be uh, 
moving some bits around over to the bakery as well now oh yeah the other thing i'm going to be buying i said about getting a sugar beet harvester i'm going to be buying the sugar beet harvester in this episode i i did think because i was going to do alfalfa and alfalfa hay bales for feeding the sheep i suddenly thought i'm going to get really close to my limit so i thought about putting a pallet and oh blimey that's a lot more than i thought there was going to be Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to put in a uh, pallet and bale storage for all the bales. And then I thought, no, because I, I well, I've, we've had it on previous maps. Carpathian, it worked fine. What was the other map? It didn't. Edgewater, it didn't work. But once I hit the bale limit, although they were stored away and they weren't actually on the map, they were in bale storage. I couldn't take any bales back out of the storage because it said I had too many, which I, which I didn't. So I'm now terrified of putting them into the bale and pallet storage. Now, when this happened before, I had loads of people telling me what I should do, what I'd done wrong, how to do it differently. I tried every permutation on Edgewater and I could not get that to work. And I can't risk putting in 150 bales to then have to get rid of the, um, the storage building and lose them all. So I think what we might do is loose storage for alfalfa hay. I was I was really looking forward to bailing actually, but let's do that. That's my intention. There we go. That's way more corn flour than I thought there'd be. So I'll put some in because like I say I just wanted to, I wanted to do cornbread. That was just. <laughs> I might do pumpkin pie, I might do stuff like that. I was going to bring over some wheat as well, wasn't I? Just, like, so I've got this list of things that I want to do. List of things that I think will be really cool. So, let's turn that off for the moment. I'll take these over. We'll drop the soup off first. So drop the tr drop the soup off. Look. Well, I'm so frustrated about those ice cream pallets. I was so buzzing because over the last few months we've produced so many. I was going to bring them all up, load them on the train, send them off to the ice cream parlours of Sedalia. But nope. There goes our potato soups. Twenty thousand three hundred and thirty-seven. Was it worthwhile doing the soup factory? You better believe it was. We've got loads more potatoes to go through that, and then we're gonna have a few carrots. Let's whiz across the store. Now, I've got a few different options here on capacities and speeds and stuff like that. I'm going to go fairly standard because as far as I'm concerned, it's still self-propelled. That's a big bonus. It's more the capacity I'm concerned about, not the speed it runs at. We could run this at 124 miles an hour. I'm not going to. That's not the point. Um, I was going to go with the Colossus, but look at because of the price as well and... The fact that the Terrados T440 will do cotton and sugarcane as well. So if we get any cotton harvest come up, it's probably not a bad idea, I think. So, I think I might keep it. Um, I might just keep it red. I, I'm not going to go with a... Where am I? I might do... Um, Speeds are insane. Might go for that, I think. The custom. How much is that one? It's only a grand more. But it won't harvest at that speed, so that's good. That will get us around the map a bit better. So I'm going to fiddle around with this. Um, and then the header, I was going to go for... I was going to mix and match them, because you can. I was going to go with the Colossus header, 
to run with this harvester but i thought no what no because the colossus harvester whilst it does multiple things the header's expensive fairly expensive if i go for a standard header and this is only 10 grand so i'll be spending well it'll be a little bit more maybe 210 212 000 for the harvester and header compared to 400 and something thousand if i go for the other one um so it still leaves me a bit of money to play with. I could afford to do the other one, but that's what I'm thinking. There we go. 211,000 all in. Now, the standard header is a 5.4 metre wide. I've gone because it's, I've bought the carrot one, and I can buy other ones. That's not a problem. Or lease other ones if I want to, if I get contracts come up. Um, I suppose I should have leased it, shouldn't I? I don't worry. Still, still saving myself a fortune. Um, that will run at 12 miles an hour. The standard one is 12 miles an hour. So I'm more than happy with that. Stop that there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't go red in the end. <laughs> Went for the satin green. I was thinking of going for a... Uh... There we go. Oh, it's put around the other way. That's weird. Why did it put around that way? Lights, beacons, cool. So whilst a little bit bonkers, it's not as bonkers as it could have been. I think, did I? I didn't change the capacity, I don't think. So, um, if you think a standard one's usually 45, is it? I think this is a 60,000 litre. So it's going to run a little bit faster. It's 5.4 metre wide header, 60,000 litre tank. I can't really odds that. I could go nuts. We could go with 124 mile an hour. We could go with a million litre tank capacity. You know, is it a million or 1.5? Anyway, it's a lot. But I don't need to. What I might do, because our trailer only goes to 33, which means when that's full, that's two trailer loads. Do I trade that in now? I'm thinking of going with again. Keep, again, I could go nuts if I wanted to. And I've used these before, the Tardis. If I go for the Tardis M at thirty thousand liters, because these have got pin hitches and you can put two together, I could run two of those at sixty thousand liters. Which I think I might, I mean, it's obviously, I could go for the XL, I could go 150,000 litre or 200,000 litre, it's standard, but that's not, you know, that's not normal. And then we've got these ones, but it's a swivel, these are swivel front axle, but that's 25,000 litre, or oh, that one's 250,000 litre. So I'm thinking, I know I use the same trailers a lot, but they work. And the other option would be, I mean, that super hopper I've used on... Does that take everything? That might not be about it. Oh, we haven't got a lorry. Maybe now's the time to buy a lorry as well. Should we get a lorry? We've got the money, haven't we? Yeah, we'll do the new root crops, won't it? I'm thinking. What do we reckon? What do we reckon? Oh, ho, we got ourselves a shiny new trailer. Just into shining new light to go with it. I've got to load some stuff up. Let's turn the lights off on this for the moment. Let's get this over to the bakery. And then we'll start the carrots. Let's get the carrots going. Pete asked me the other day whether or not this trailer was auto load. Because he could he asked how I'd got the, the stuff so neatly stacked. It's just, it's just taking my time, that's all. It doesn't always work, but what I'll often do, once loaded... Oh, no, I've done that. How's that gone like that? There we go. Um, once loaded, I will often um, 
give them all a bit of a nudge up which I've done before oh that's interesting why is that not liking that that's weird I don't have no problems unloading these before Yeah, so what I'll often do is just, once they're loaded on, put down the back ramps and then drive up and with a pallet or a couple of pallets sideways and just shove them all up. And what you'll often find is once they hit this back wall here, they'll flatten themselves out and then any behind, once you've undone the straps of course, they'll then flatten themselves against that so then you end up with a much neater stack. That's what I'll often do. I forgot I had this, this, isn't, uh, this is the floating one, it's not the attached one. Yeah, it does that. I should have gone for the attached because that's going to bug me. I've had a problem with that before. Why is that doing that now? Anyway. Once I've loaded these on, it probably would have been quicker just to drive them over on the telehandle. The angle of this, actually. Right, let's get the cornflour and butter in. Yeah, it would have been quicker just... <laughs> yep, turn your hammer over. I thought it was the further one, but that's the dairy, isn't it? Cool. That's what we need. Let's go. It's not going to make much because we've got a lot of butter, but I need to get more butter over here. I need to work out what's wrong with that thing. Okay, cornbread's underway. I'm going to take over the uh, well, carrot harvester, but our root harvester, or just harvester. And while I'm over there, I'm going to make a decision on what lorry I'm going to buy. Truck. I haven't decided. While I'm doing that, a few thank yous. I want to. Whoa! There's no delay. Normally you get a bit of a delay. That, that just went straight away. Um, I want to thank um, Dozer John when I was doing the fertilising contract and he asked why I didn't use the in game Kubota fertiliser spreader. And my, and my brain was up. I didn't think there was one. I went through and I checked, couldn't find one. So I messaged him and he messaged back and said, no, it's part of the Kubota pack. There's the. Um, equipment pack is it so I said you know what since that came out I haven't really looked at it haven't used it so I, th I thought I'd have a look and in that pack there's a fertilizer spreader pretty much like um, the one I'd bought but it does 10,000 litres so I've swapped it out so I've got I've still got my front tank 2,200 so I've got potentially 12,200 litres. Now, I could go for a bigger one, a Braydale. There's, there's all the different options available, trailed ones or whatever, but for the price and what it did, I thought it made perfect sense. While I'm doing that as well, um, I've got a few thank yous. I haven't done these for quite a while. So, a massive shout out and thank you to Tony, to Greg, to Stephen, Robert. I've got a few, no, these aren't duplicates, these are different people. Um, to uh, Robert, Jason, another Robert, Felix, Nicholas. James, Peter, 
Just wait for my list to scroll. Whoa. So I'm trying to look at the screen and drive at the same time. Um, Leroy. James Peter. Yeah, then I'm back around again to Tony, Greg, Stephen, Robert. Yeah, so... Oh, and Nina. Thank you to Nina as well. Um, for your generosity and kindness. Thank you very much. It is very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Actually, I'll look at our clamp. How's our clamp doing? Let's just double check on that. 32%. We need to unfold this. Is that because that plant in a different direction? Oh yeah, from down here it looks the same, but from up there it's because it's the lights catching it a different way. It's all still carrot. Should have made this orange actually, shouldn't I think about it? But I will do other ones. So let's do that. So even though it's lo its lowest setting. 12 miles an hour, can't odds it, with a 60,000 litre tank, again which is its smallest setting, because when I planted all this I just kept thinking, <laughs> once it's ready to harvest, even if I use that, it's not self-propelled, but that one trailed harvester that comes as part of the uh, root crops, the premium, it's trailed and you can hire a worker, the only one that has a capacity the capacity was tiny. I thought, it's, it's going to take me so long. But the great thing with this is, I mean, we're going to hit 60,000 litres fairly quickly. Oh, this is terrifying how much we're going to get. Answers on a postcard, people. As I'm starting this off now, don't wait till I finish. Don't wait till the end. Put your guess down. What do you think we're going to get off this? Do you reckon off this field we'll get over a million litres of carrots? That's a lot of carrot soup. Now what I'm going to do is unload into my, my soup factory. But the thing I've got to bear in mind as well is um, I don't have anywhere to store the carrots. So once I hit the limit of what that will hold, I'm going to have to seriously consider what to do with them. I was originally just going to put them in a massive pile and have a huge carrot pile. And that will just attract those pesky wabbits. Which is kind of ironic because we've actually got rabbits as pets on uh, Court Farm. <laughs> One farm I'm trying to avoid them. Another farm I'm actively encouraging them. Actually, to be fair, I'm just thinking, if we do one complete round, are we going to hit 60,000 litres before we get all the way round? Probably. We could do well over a million litres, couldn't we? I'm going to leave my lorry. This machine will absolutely pay for itself <laughs> when I get more of those contracts come up. Some of those contracts we had, I did a lot of them off camera. When I went for that period where I, I just did a load of contracts, I was just enjoying playing, you know, um, cool, yeah, we, we earned some good money on root crop contracts.
and there we have it not even a full run around the outside and we are full Ooh. trying to work out where oh, I suppose it's alfalfa it's grass so I can technically just drive over it uh, but I need to get a lorry in here somehow I'll just back around the corner Lorry time! I have purchased a Mack Trucks RS700. I changed the colour of the cover on the trailer as well. Let's get this out, let's get it loaded. Oh, no, I did check the night, this does take care of us. I thought, please don't get out of there and it doesn't. Probably should have got an auger wagon, shouldn't I? I could get one of those at some point as well. Yeah, the lorry was 62? 63 grand? So when I get to a point I can get a worker running on the carrots, I'll go and get the harvester and we'll get the rest of the corn taken off that field. like that. Right. Time to crack on. I love all the components, the cams, everything that everything moving down the front there on that header. But the only downside to doing it like this, compared to the stuff that comes as part of the premium, is with the premium you see the carrots going up, you know, the pickup pipes sort of augers up to the back and I don't know, it just, it, that was cool because that was something new that we hadn't seen before. But for ease of use, to be fair.
I've decided to do it the other way around. <laughs> Think what we're going to do because the, the the speed at which that's running, even though I've got it on the lowest settings, um, it's still filling up pretty quickly because the yield of the carrots is really high. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set a worker off on the corn. Didn't do the snoots. Snoot, snoots. Let's go. Yeah, I'm going to get the corn going on here, and then I'll go back and I'll be running the um, carrot harvester. That's better. I think. Did we leave part way through? We did, didn't we? Now, what's interesting? I think after root crops, anyway. The uh, field that's got the carrots on is saying needs ploughing again. I ploughed that before we planted it. So that field and this field needs planting and both need lime as well. So that's something we're going to have to get on to. So if I now get a worker going on that, I'll get one of the tractors. I'll grab me, grab me other tractors. The nice thing about having the lorry now, the semi. Semi. Um, what was that? Semi. Semi trailer. Um, it, it means we've, we free up our other trailer as well. So we can use our other trailer for doing the corn while we're doing the carrots on this one. Got a funny feeling that's going to be full pretty quick. Um, I did mention, I said I put that shelter in. I put a couple of shelters on the sides of buildings as well. One over where the fertiliser and seed was being stored. But I used all the fertiliser in fertising contracts. So I have been buying some more. And one on the side of the building where the low loader trailer originally, I kind of did a bit of gravel around the side of it to park around there. I thought, you know what, we'll put a cover on that as well. I've left space in here. I mean, I say I've left space, we haven't filled up. Because we do melt more alfalfa bales, but also we're going to need more straw for bedding. And if we use it for total mixed rations, if we do need more straw at any point, I'm going to put it along there so we can get it all stored away. But yeah, you can see there on the side of the building there, I've got that lean-to shelter. That one I'd already put in there. That was putting the wood into. So I've got this one here. Fits on there rather nicely. And then this one here... And that's the Kubota. Pretty much what I had. But, um, so, yeah. Thank you to Dozer John for that. As far as the uh, strawberry stuff goes, Stephen, I honestly don't know what to do. I don't know what to suggest. Because when I messaged Stephen, I messaged back and said I'd, I'd managed, I was getting stuff out of mine. Mine was working fine. Once I realised it was an auto load now, I, I checked it and it worked fine. But now, nothing. I've just noticed and realised I'm doing... Oh no, actually no, my, the other trailer, the, uh, the one on the lorry, is uh, hardy red on the cover. But all my trailers seem to be green. Anyone change their estimates and their guesses? I've done two full loads now over to the soup factory. And the lorry has got 60,000 litres in it. So, we'll see. Leave that there. The harvester coming back. That's going to stop the wrong way around, isn't it? I think I need to do some more runs this way down the field because that's going to end up in the ditch every time it turns around, isn't it? get lucky I think we will cool
That'll be fully game before we get back. Right, here's what we're up to. It is ten past nine. We have filled 450 plus thousand litres of carrots into our Zoop factory. 449,912, and it has been processing some already. So, yeah, say 450,000 litres. I've got 77,000 litres in here and nowhere to put it. Huh? That was supposed to be... Why is that not full? That's supposed to be 70... Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, 74,000 in there. I thought I'd filled that. Off our cornfield, which is now completely cleared, we've got 32,448 litres. That can go into our silo. I'm still seriously considering buying the corn dryer because we've been putting propane in there and then we can get some dried corn, which is worth more anyway, and then we can use some of that to make the, the real... the fine flour, I think, corn flour. So I don't know, actually you know what, for the time being I think I might leave this in the trailer because I might take that up and we'll buy the corn dryer, I think. Because I want to do dried corn. So I'm pretty sure the price is better. Are we going to look at our pricing? Uh, our price for corn is 752762, somewhere around there. Dried corn? One four one five, so double the double the value for dried corn if we dry it down. Now, admittedly, buying we'll have to buy the production. Potentially, we won't have to put any propane in there if it's still registering the propane that I filled it up with, because up till now it has been full. Um, we've been paid for that propane, so technically, we'd kind of be up on the deal. So that's an option. Uh, but. So I've got two, I've got two, two, another choices, lots of choices to make. Um, I can either drive all of that up to the railroad silo and store it in there, which I probably could do, or put a root crop silo, silo on site, forage, storage, something like that, which I think is a better alternative. I think it 
I'm just trying to know whether it will fit in this gap here, maybe. Or this gap here. I'll probably fit in this gap here. Uh, there's a Missy B one I used on. Um... Oh, blimey. One of them. <laughs> Mine's blank. It doesn't matter. That's been updated. I think that takes the new crop types. I hope it takes the new crop types. If it doesn't, I'm in trouble. Um, again, I'm just thinking ahead too. If I do lots of other root crop contracts if i have any left over i've then got somewhere to store it and it doesn't have to be left up at the, the um, railroad silo it also means i can bring my sugar beet down and put that into storage um so if i decide to do something with sugar we've got a root crop on site as well our sugar beet on site as well so i'm thinking this gap right here under build mode under silos is where i should find it say 25 grand root crop storage so if we put it around that way it puts our root crop to the front now it shows a sugar beet I'm pretty sure it takes anything just sort of think will it go that way around 25 pretty much on the nose just thinking for actually putting the stuff in because that's done around the back or should I swing it around the other way now then you can't really see well, no, it doesn't really matter actually if I put that there at an angle, in that gap, like that. 25 grand, bang on the nose, as I have been doing the whole time. I'll do a little bit of landscaping around it, put a bit of gravel. I might put, might put grass across the front of that, because we actually tip in and take out at the back. Both is done round here in this marked area. So gravel this around so it just becomes a sweep off of the main track. Do that while we're actually, why not? Painting. Assuming of course it will let me do the other bit. Do that. Go to that. That. I missed that bit there. There you go. That's that bit done. Now we go back to painting and we'll go to. Uh, we'll start with that one. So if we just bring that at more of an angle so it's more of a sweep off the main. Take that gap there and just take that kind of straight on, really. That way, with the big lorry, it's not too far of a departure then we switch over to that one just do a little bit of a bit of a blend and then that one uh, that one there there we go Like it was always there. Solid. Right. Fingers crossed then. We got the rest of it into storage. So with what we got in here, 74, 450 in there. What's that take us to? 520,000. I've got 60,000 in the harvester. 580,000. I don't think we are going to hit a million litres. I thought we would. This changes gear rapidly. There we go. Carrot in. Just make sure it's going in. Root crop storage. Carrots. There we go. Excellent stuff. Happy with that. So, just remains to be seen then how much we end up with left. Because I, I wasn't sure how much the root crop would cost, the root crop storage would cost. There's a top ace 8881, but that was a hundred thousand. So the fact I could do this for 25. 
this holds a million litres, the top ace 8881 holds 800,000. So it worked out better value to go for this one. And if I now spend 100,000 on buying the um, corn dryer, I'm still left with a bit of money. It doesn't leave me too short. Right, back at it then. I do need to make some more Tomox ration for the cows, so I grabbed the other John Deere and grabbed the uh, mixer wagon out. Let's go and load this back up. So the question is, do I get a hay and straw storage or do I just get a silo, like a multi-fruit? Multi-fruit's generally the route I go down Pardon the um, for my hay and grass and sort of straw storage it just makes more sense than having one that only does hay and straw but why did every time I hire a worker I keep losing the swivel nature the articulated nature not quite sure why it keeps doing it put that down So with about a third to go, I'm just thinking, we're going to be close, because if we're up around 600,000 litres now, with a third left, it's going to be 900 and something, roughly, isn't it? If we get that close. Still not bad. Because even with the, th the 300 to 100, the 3 to 1 ratio for doing soup, if we do carrot soup, that with 900,000 litres available, that would give us 300,000 litres of canned soup. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? The carrot harvest is complete, and what did we end up with? That's the question. It's all in the root crop storage. I'm coming over to here. Now, the other thing to find out is whether or not all the propane I delivered is in there, because it was taking a long time to chug. I'm not selling that, because what we're going to do now, I'm going to buy the corn dryer. We're in the corn drying business. Grain milk, corn dryer. Let's go. Why not? It's Christmas. Come on. 100,000. Let's do it. Manage it. Oh, yes. So the propane... It's a bit naughty in it, to be fair. The propane I've been delivering is in there. So I got paid for delivering it. I've just bought the company out. It's all the propane that I delivered. I, yeah, it, it's a, it's a win-win. They get paid for their company. I get, you know. <clears throat> let's, just, let's just go with that for the time being. Why is that on? I should be on that. There we go. It's better. Let's front hit on the top of that. Cool. Did I say 10 litres already? 11 litres. Whoa! Our dried corn is going. So, dried corn is worth twice what regular corn is worth. So it's worth me bringing it up here. Um, plus, I can take dried corn, put it into my grain mill, and we can get the super fine stuff. That was right, wasn't it? Come here. Where's my, where's my thing? Do it every single time I come in. There we go. Uh, we can do fine cornflour, which requires dried. Uh, which I can then use at the bakery for other things as well. I can't remember what it was now, but anyway. Yeah, so there we go. A whole range of things we can now do. Now, as far as um, how much carrot did we end up with, what was your guess? What were you, th were you thinking? I said around 900,000, I reckon. I, originally, I thought over a million, but then based upon what we had, I thought mm, we might get to about 900,000. That was kind of my what I was thinking. 
What do you think? What did you think? What did you put down? Well, I can tell you, if we go to here, we've got 411,897 litres in storage and 450,000 litres, or which would have been just over because it has been processing already, uh, in our soup factory which brings us to 862,000 litres. So I was a little bit short of 900,000, but we didn't quite get a million. When we first started out, and I was going around the outsides, but I suppose every time you do a loop around the outside, you then, you're getting, you're coming in, so your loop round is less and less each time, if you keep doing loops. Obviously, we went up and down the field. So my initial get guesstimate of over a million, you know, it's, it's still not bad, though. That's pretty good, I have to say. So... Another fine day here in Alma, Missouri. A corn dryer is going, which we now own. I'm just hoping for some more contract work <laughs> because I've been spending everything. But that said, we now own the grain mill. We own the corn dryer, which is new, which has got propane. We've now got corn that's running. We've got a brand new root crop, beets, cotton harvester and header and a lorry and a trailer. So all the work doing the contracts, it's paying off. And that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Tell your friends to come along, have a look, see what's going on. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching. <laughs>